Hi, Facebook family. I haven't been on Facebook in a while. I haven't um, posted anything. So, um, really, I've just been just reading the Word of God every day, studying it. And I'm almost at the end of the of, of my plan. only got uh, so many days left. And, um, <clears throat> well, to the end of the year, right? And um, today I was reading in Acts, in the book of Acts, chapter 8, uh, chapter 13 and 14. And um, when I was reading this, I, the Lord spoke to me. And like r right away, whenever, I don't know if it, this happens to you, but it happens to me. I could be reading the Word of God. I could be reading the Bible. And all of a sudden, I get like this message, you know. And I don't got nothing to write it down. So quickly, I got like, give me envelope I could find. And I wrote this down. And this is what I got from what I, what I was reading, where I was reading that. And it's that sometimes God has to allow drastic things to happen to remove an evil person from your life <clears throat> this person who's been in your way preventing you from hearing about meeting Jesus Christ and from having a relationship with God <clears throat> we might not like we might not like what uh, let's put my, my reading glasses on we might not like what happens to that person because they might be you know a close friend your best friend uh they might be a family member it might be a parent it might be a, a spouse you know but god will remove them for a time so you can be ready whenever they come back into your life you can be stronger with your faith you know because you're going to finally have the lord in your life and the way and this is all from when i was reading this uh these verses so i'm going to go ahead and read uh it's in acts um <clears throat> chapter 13 and it says that in the Antioch congregation for prophets were prophets and teachers. Barnaba, Shimon. Hold on, I'm going to have to change this because right now I'm reading it in the, um, I'm reading in the complete Jewish Bible. So let me change it to the King James, the New King James Version. So that way I can read it to y'all in that version. Now it says here, now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Teachers, not teachers. <laughs> teachers, teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaean, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for, for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So <clears throat> they sent Paul and Saul and Barnabas, because Saul is Paul, but he hadn't had his his name changed yet. So we still here know him in Acts 13 as Saul. <clears throat> so they sent him away. So they went on to Cyprus, Cyprus, or Cyprus. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. <clears throat> now, when they had gone through the island to par to Papos, Papos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus, who was with the pro proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. Now, this is verse six and seven already. <clears throat> this man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. Verse 8. But Elymas, the sorcerer, or so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. He withstood them. He was like, you know, don't do it. Uh, then Saul, verse 9, who also is called Paul, now we know his name is now Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, verse 10, O full of all deceit and all fraud. You son of the devil, whoa, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And verse 11, and now indeed, see, he's asking him a question. Will you not cease? Will you not stop perverting the straight ways of the Lord? Now verse 11, and now indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. Whoa, 
He just messed too much with the Lord's plans for these people who this man was hanging around with. And the Lord said, I've had enough. And he used Saul slash Paul to let him know that. And he said, you're going to be blind for a time, though. Not forever, for a time. So he made him blind for a certain amount of time to get him out of the way. To get him out of the way of God's plan. And it says, and immediately a dark mist fell on him and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Because I know that if it suddenly got dark before me, I wouldn't know what to do for a while until I got someone to help me. Or finally I remembered if I'm in my own home, what it looked like. But it's just something how immediately it happened, right? Because that's how God works. God works like that sometimes. Immediately. Then, it says, verse 12, Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. See, sometimes God has to do something drastic in order for someone to be removed from his way of his plan from your life for your life. God loves every single one of us. Every single one of us. He doesn't love nobody less. That's why sometimes when we get uh, upset, like even me with my own families and friends and brothers and sisters in Christ and things like that, when they're behaving in a certain way and I feel it in my heart, I know God is telling me pray for them. Pray for them. And it's like, oh, Lord, you know, how many times do I got to pray for them? They're, they can, you know, like, Convict their hearts and, and, and talk to them and, and let them see their ways. And he's like, I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray for them. Even though you're mad at them and you aren't speaking to them or anything like that, I want you to pray for them, Eva. And you're going to do that. And of course I'm going to do that. I'm not going to not pray for someone when God tells me to pray for them. And um, it could be my worst enemy and God tells me to pray for them. I'm going to pray for them. Yes, I got enemies. I have people I know. Um, I'm not perfect. You know, I'm already in my 50s. And I met the Lord Jesus Christ when I was 28 years old. And when I met him, there was some evil stuff going on in my life. I was surrounded by so much evil. My only, my only sunshine, my only light in my life were my four beautiful children. Who God blessed me with at a very young age because he knew before I even knew him personally, like I do today, he knew what my life was going to be like. And he knew that those four beautiful children, if he allowed me to raise and be mom to, were going to be the ones that gave me the strength. He was going to use them to give me strength to keep going every day. So that one day I can be here on Facebook. Talking to whoever is listening, because not everybody listens to my videos. Not everybody looks at them. Sometimes they look at them for one minute, one second, and not no more. But I'm going to continue to make videos for my family, for my grandkids, uh, for anybody that's willing to listen to them. And I will post them. And on YouTube, uh, share them on Facebook. <laughs> but I'm going to do my best to be doing this until the Lord says, no more, Eva. So, to my Facebook family, my grandkids, my children, I love you. Bye.